Hello, thank you for joining this special update uh, from key voices in and around our community from here in Covington County. I'm Kevin Wilburn. I'm the pastor here at First Baptist Church in Andalusia. And um, before you tell us that we're too close together, uh, before anyone, all five of us entered this room and the three technical people in the back, before that ever occurred, they were screened before they entered the building and they've been sanitized, they've been cleaned, they've been washed, squeaky clean. And so uh, we know that through, through uh, technology, we're trying to communicate to you, and we don't want to set a bad example. So I want to start this conversation off by a little introduction uh, from the Scriptures. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, If then you've been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things that are on the earth. It is easy to become consumed with COVID-19, COVID-19, with news and information constantly coming towards you. News from around the world, around the nation, around the state, and then there's news from where we live, down home. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is information around home. Around home, people are concerned about the virus that's around our neighbors and that's consuming the media, that's consuming all the news outlets. Around home, people are concerned and prayerful about those that have the virus. They're prayerful and concerned about our nurses and medical professionals working tirelessly and diligently, doing all that they can to care for our community. Around home, uh, community leaders are doing all that they can to keep a sense of normal during this interruption, this disruption to our lives. Here at home, the faith community, we're adjusting our environments and our services. We're ministering to neighbors. We're caring for each other. Across denominational lines, we are sharing the gospel. And here at home, our neighbors, maybe even someone joining in today watching this program, uh, your business might be closed or you're having economic impact or maybe you've even been laid off. We don't not have all the answers to all the situations that every person faces. But this panel here today, let me introduce them. They will address several questions that was uh, emailed in or texted in prior to this uh, live broadcast. They also have uh, information to help you navigate situations in your uh, unique situations. Every person has a unique situation, and we're trying to address the broad stroke with this panel and then there's individual cases that have obviously everybody has individual needs. So let me introduce who you're seeing. Uh, this uh, noon broadcast we have the Andalusia Administrator, the CEO Clint Kendall. Uh, his background is nursing. He operates Andalusia Health here in Andalusia. Uh, Dr. Charles Eldridge, most of you know him as Dr. E. Um, I'm going to get his autograph before we're <laughs> finished. Uh, Greg White, who is the chairman of the Covington County Commission, and our mayor, Merle, uh, Mayor Earl Johnson. Well, let me, I'm going to kind of moderate, I'm going to kind of help facilitate our time to get some questions in as quickly as possible. And then before we leave, and I hope you join us the whole time, we're going to pray together. We're going to pray together as a faith community, as, um, as, as people that are serving in all different capacities. So here's the first question. Clint, it's coming your way. It's coming high and fast, so get ready. Do we have tests in Covington County? Uh, the easy answer to that, Kevin, is yes. This is one of the biggest topics uh, that we hear, the biggest question from the medical community, from our community, from everywhere around the state and the nation is, is do we have tests? Uh, we are able to test at Andalusia Health. Uh, we have all the equipment and everything that we need, and we have the support of the state. Uh, the Alabama Department of Health is been providing us tests as we go through and uh, helping us work through our supply of tests and getting our tests back to us. Um, but so tests are available. Uh, we do test a little bit by the CDC standards though. I think that uh, most people are hearing what they kind of want to hear when they hear the news. Everybody can be tested. But truthfully, it is about getting the high risk patients tested. Those that are the most critical <coughs> or the most, mo those that already have symptoms of uh, the COVID virus in them and around, which will be fever, cough, flu-like symptoms, uh, 
So the biggest one of those is fever. Uh, viral shedding starts with fever, so we're really looking for that. So if you come out and ask for a test or you come to our emergency room, don't be surprised if you're not getting the test. Uh, we will provide the medical screening. We'll go through everything. We'll do flu swab first uh, just to make sure it's not the flu. Uh, we'll start eliminating it the simplest, and then we'll work towards COVID. But during this time, we do take precautions at the hospital. Um, we will be providing you a mask when you walk in the door. Uh, if you haven't been by lately, it looks like uh, you, you're walking into the jail uh, of the county courthouse. We got the guards up testing your fever, asking you a bunch of questions, and you don't go past go without any of that. So if you come in there with a fever, we'll know right away and we'll get a mask on you. Or if you're coming in, please let us know and we'll, we'll go ahead and be prepared for you at the door. Can you tell us a little about, there's a number posted on the screen behind this panel. Can you tell us a little about what that number is associated with, how this number should be used? Uh, as a community, it was discussed that we really don't have access to answer questions. Uh, and people are going out to Facebook and other social media sites and seeking answers that may not always be the most truthful ones. So, uh, as a community, we decided that we need a place where you get the facts um, and be able to get your questions answered, uh, no matter what they are. Health care, uh, you know, I'm just not, I'm not dealing well with, uh, with the whole isolation, COVID. Uh, you know, some of the anxieties that are going on right now, I, I need things. Uh, so we, we decided as a community that we needed a number to call. Uh, and we, so we started the Cove Covington County COVID hotline uh, it is going to be manned by Andalusia Health Staff 24-7, uh, so you can get your questions answered. Uh, it is also a place, if, you gotta, if you're needing health care and you're having these symptoms, you can call that number and we'll get you to the proper physician uh, or into the ED or whatever that health care need might be. Uh, perfect. Let me uh, follow up a couple more questions, Clint, that I think you'd be the best person to answer. Uh, how long does it, if someone is tested, they go through the process you just explained. How long does it take to receive those test results, uh, whether it be negative or, um, or otherwise? Uh, at the present time, it, you know, we're being told by the health department it's two to four days uh, to get the test back from the time we collect it, the time we get it to Montgomery, and it gets back to us. Um, we are really looking at a little bit, you know, that four-day mark right at the present time getting our test back. Uh, for the simple fact is they're out there now. Uh, there's more people being tested in, in Alabama and the demand's there. So they're, they're ramping up their, their staff to be able to test quicker and to test more patients. So I, we would see that number going down significantly over the next couple of days. So this is kind of follow up to both of those questions. It's a little more detailed. Uh, why, if we have tests, why are we not testing? Okay. Uh, if we have them, why are we not test? Because everyone doesn't need a test. Uh, right at the present time, the CDC guidelines do state that the high-risk patients and those that are experiencing symptoms uh, that meet the criteria of travel and to meet the criteria of being, and we've added, we've, we've kind of added to that criteria since uh, around us has seen uh, kind of a, a, a pop, uh, popping up of cases so any place that has four or greater cases, uh, we ask you if you've been there. So, you know, you're talking Pensacola, Destin, Montgomery, uh, the Auburn area. So we're asking those questions as well. So we really narrow it down and really trying to keep our community as safe as possible and testing the appropriate people. So when, uh, you know, we really need a test, we want to be able to have that test for our community. And, and maybe this is a final question and we possibly could circle back around. Um, how many ventilators do we have at Andalusia Health? Uh, that, <laughs> that, is, that is a great question. Uh, Andalusia Health, uh, we have been preparing for this for a, for a, for a good while. Uh, since we started hearing about it, you know, we had it on the radar, uh, collecting up PPE, doing the things we need to keep us safe and our community safe. Uh, ventilator is one of those things that is needed for, you know, for the critical yield. Uh, not every patient will need a ventilator or get a ventilator, but we need to have them for that time. Uh, the, we have ample supply. Uh, we also have some backup uh, plans with other equipment uh, that's in our facilities that, uh, that we can convert over to provide ventilation. Uh, with the ORs being on non-elective procedures right at the present time, we also have a few anesthesia machines that we can bring into service 
uh, to be able to provide the care that is needed for our community. That's fantastic. Uh, we're going to go to Dr. E, and uh, he has some uh, comments, and then we have some questions that we'd like to ask you if you don't answer them in your comments. Okay. <clears throat> uh, everyone has been inundated with, uh, with information about uh, the current crisis with coronavirus. Uh, I, I would like to just give a little synopsis about the disease before we start so everyone uh, will at least know what we know. There are a lot of unknowns about about this particular virus. <clears throat> this is, uh, as Kevin said, a, cor a coronavirus. Uh, it is a uh, virus that affects our respiratory system. Uh, it's not a GI virus. It's not a, a, uh, a virus that causes muscular cramps and aches and pains like the influenza virus does. It causes respiratory symptoms, congestion, cough, shortness of breath, fever. This uh, family of viruses has been around a long time. We have experience with them from, from the past. The, um, th there are some people who are at high risk for their disease, and they're the people who need to heed most of the warnings and be more cautious about uh, contracting the illness. This particular virus seems to have more virulence as you age. The vast majority of the mortality worldwide, and there's been over a quarter of a million cases of this virus uh, worldwide to this point. Uh, the vast majority of mortality has been in people 70 years old or older. So those are the people who need first and foremost to be very careful. There are other people at risk, people who are on immune suppressant drugs, people who are being treated for conditions like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, people who are taking biological medicines that suppress your immune system. Those people are at risk. People who are pregnant because of alterations in your immune system associated with pregnancy are in increased risk. People who have diseases of their respiratory tract like asthma, COPD, are at greater risk. And particularly, based on the Italian numbers particularly, people who smoke cigarettes are at greater risk. We initially thought that it had a predilection for men, but as it turns out, it was because more men smoked in the Italian study that it affected them more. It's not a, 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 a gender question, it's a, a question of health risk. There are, there are some things that we need to know about where we stand as of this time there are no, no confirmed cases of coronavirus in Covington County. However, there are confirmed cases in Houston County, in Butler County, Montgomery County, Okaloosa County, Florida, Walden County, Florida. So you can see we are surrounded by confirmed cases. So while we don't have a confirmed case, we will. It's almost a certainty that the virus, if it's not here already, will be here. So we have to be prepared for this virus, and we have to do the things that are necessary to protect ourselves from the virus. The main thing that has been used to protect people in this particular situation is called social distancing. The infectious circumference around an infected person is about six feet. So the recommendation is that people stay as much as possible six feet apart from one another. That's why we're too close at this table, as Kevin explained. Uh, the other things is that we need to avoid crowds. 
the current recommendation is that we try to stay in groups of 10 or less. We need to avoid skin-to-skin -skin contact as much as possible. That is why there is recommendations against hugging and shaking hands. And uh, it will be good for our mental health when we can return to those <laughs> activities. But for the present time, we're going to have to verbalize our care and concern for people rather than uh, demonstrating it physically. Uh, the other things that, that we need to do is we need to practice things that my grandmother would have told me. Wash your hands. If you cough, if you sneeze, if you eat, if you go to the bathroom, if you inadvertently have physical contact with someone that you think, well, that might, person might be infected, go wash your hands. If you're not washing your hands, seven to ten times a day, you can almost be certain you're not washing your hands enough. You say, well, nobody washes their hands that much, but I assure you, and I've counted this before, I average washing my hands about 35 times a day. Of course, it's a little different working in a medical office. I understand that, and I don't expect people to wash their hands that many times. But your hands won't fall off if you wash them <laughs> 35 times a day. The, the other thing that, that we need to, to uh, do is realize that we're going to have family members, friends, and people that we just casually run into at stores that are stressed out. This is a stressful situation. People's lives have been disrupted. They've lost jobs. They're concerned. They're anxious. Anxiety causes tension, which causes people to be at the best cranky and at worst downright rude. So you remember, if you can, to be cooperative, to be kind, to be part of their solution. Don't be part of their problem. Do Dr. E, let me ask you a couple of questions. We had a, a teen a student focus group of teenagers. And here's a couple of their questions. I'll read them both because they kind of go together. Um, what are the symptoms that if, if a teenager, are the symptoms in a, in a student, let's say from uh, 10 years old to 18, are, there, are their symptoms the same as a, someone in their 70s? Would the symptoms run parallel? The, the initial symptoms are exactly the same regardless of age. You're gonna have congestion, and cough. What will not happen in the younger people is a rapid progression to lower respiratory tract disease. The, the likelihood of the younger people developing viral uh, infiltration of their lungs, <coughs> shortness of breath is much lower than a person uh, that is older. What, what we need to realize, however, that doesn't mean that the young people are off the hook because they may not feel sick, but they can give it to their mother, their grandmother, their other people in their family that are loved ones. So while they may not be sick, they are the vector that will infect other people who may become quite sick. So young people get no pass. They, they uh, are involved and the infectious rate is the same for them as it is for older people. The difference is severity. Uh, there's been virtually no mortality worldwide in people under 20 years old. So these people are going to do well with the virus, but that doesn't decrease their danger to people who are at high risk. I think that that's very good uh, insight and advice and, and facts. Can you, can you give us, if I had say, if I said uh, 2A, just below that, can you help us understand in layman's terms how to, how to know the difference in a sinus infection or uh, all the pollen that's floating around outside versus I need to go to the hospital and get in line and call this number? Well. It is a, it is a, 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 
overlapping of symptoms with all of those things. So you're going to have to uh, differentiate uh, by doing some medical studies and some, some medical examinations on people who demonstrate those symptoms. The, the main thing is with this particular virus that fever is a constant. Now, it may not be a high 103 fever. It may be a low-grade fever, which corresponds to the shedding of the virus. Whereas, if you're just sneezing from pollen, you're not going to be a running fever. If, if, if you look at the symptoms of this, sneezing is not a major component of this particular virus. Coughing, congestion, shortness of breath, fever are the four constant symptoms. So that's what you look for. Sinus infection, you're going to have a different type of secretion in your nose. You're going to have more likely to have a sore throat. You're going to be more likely to have pressure, uh, headaches. Uh, you're going to have some positive findings on physical examination and on x-rays that you would not have with coronavirus. Th thank you so much, Dr. E. We're going to move now to Greg White, who is the County Commission Chairman for Covington County. Greg, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I know you have some comments. I don't know if we have any specific questions. I know there are some individuals that if you have questions, Greg is always available Absolutely. for you anytime. Absolutely. Let me first say how much I appreciate this, this opportunity and what you guys have presented already. If we close that off now, I think our community is well served. I appreciate the uh, information that Dr. E has just shared with us. It gives a level of comfort, a level of understanding that many people haven't had. So this is great. Thank you all so much. Uh, three or four things. Let me touch on county government first. Uh, at this time, uh, county offices are still open and operating. However, I would stress to the public the uh, need for them to avoid any unnecessary visits to our public buildings. Handle all of your business, if possible, either online or by mail. Uh, we've waived mailing fees. If you need to renew your car tag or truck tag, we waive those fees. So we're trying to encourage online and distance uh, transactions of business. Um, I will also say that the USDA offices, which are a county-owned building housing federal and state uh, agencies on the South Bypass, is closed effective today. Uh, so don't attempt to conduct business there, but we'll be monitoring that and hopefully in the not too distant future, they'll be able to open back for business. The county commission is working closely with our other elected officials, the courthouse, the judges, uh, circuit clerk, probate judge, revenue commissioner, the sheriff, uh, monitoring closely the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And we've, we have made the decisions pretty much day by day to continue to operate, encouraging our, our staff, our employees to just take extra precaution and again, encouraging the public to be careful about the circumstances and the situation. Do their business by, by mail. Uh, it's a perfect time for that. Uh, I want to just touch briefly, it's, if it's appropriate, on small business as a small business owner and uh, accountant here in town. Tax filing deadline has been extended. Effective today, that order came down. We initially had an extension on payment of taxes. Uh, the extension now applies automatically without having to file for that extension to the filing of taxes uh, normally due April 15th. Now they're due July 15th. Uh, we, we hope the offices can continue to operate, get those things prepared, but for those folks that are find themselves in, a, in dire situations because of this, uh, the federal government has taken steps to help them out. Uh, had conversation briefly with uh, Leroy Cole from the Christian Service Center before we started, and they do have food. He would invite the community to share with their neighbors by bringing food by the service center. They're continuing to operate, make food available as needed. And uh, I also would foresee that in the next couple of weeks there will be a need for additional volunteers at the service center and other deliverers of, of uh, services to our community. So I encourage you, if you find yourself with time on your hands, you've been laid off from your job, you've been sent home, and you have the energy and the wherewithal, I encourage you to look for ways to volunteer in our community. Uh, 
one other thing I would point to uh, with small businesses, there are those that are, that are being laid off and probably without a paycheck, and that certainly concerns us greatly. We're, we're looking for ways to, to fill those voids. There are other businesses that may find themselves overwhelmed with the workload because of the type of business. So we're gonna look for ways through the chambers and others to, to bridge that gap between those sent home without pay and folks needing additional workers. One other th point I would make is Governor Ivey has made ac uh, an application for Alabama to be declared a disaster area and uh, we're awaiting the declaration on that. But in the meantime, Covington County, since we're contiguous to Florida, we, uh, we have the opportunity already as a contiguous county to make application. If you're a small business owner, you can begin the process of applying for help through SBA. So you may want to avail yourselves of that today by at least getting information, getting applications, knowing where the website is. I would share that with you if I could pull it up on my phone. Maybe I can before we leave here. Sure. That's it. All right. uh, next up, Mayor, uh, would you mind uh, sharing with us? We have uh, maybe five, five minutes or so. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, because of the most recent advice and directives issued by Governor Ivey and the Alabama Department of Public Health, the city of Andalusia is taking a number of actions. Effective Monday, March 23rd, we will close City Hall to visitors. We will continue to maintain all of our essential services but conduct business in different ways. If you have business uh, with the utilities, trash, recycling bills, you can mail your payments. You can uh, use our convenient after hours drop box or drive through. If you need to establish new service, please call 222-1332 and we will work out the details with you on the phone. Uh, if you need to secure a business license or a bu building permit, you can do that online. Visit our website just at uh, cityofandalusia.com and follow the links there that will hook you up with the folks that you need to be working with uh, with respect to that. Uh, you can also reach them at 222-3312. Uh, if you need to make an appointment with me uh, or, or the clerk's office, you can uh, reach us at 222-3312 or 3313. Uh, as you know, we have already closed the Adult Activity Center in our library and our parks. Uh, those will remain closed as long as we need to observe the social distancing that uh, Dr. E mentioned earlier. We will, however, continue to operate the Senior Nutrition Center. Those seniors who normally have food delivered from the Nutrition Center will continue to receive those deliveries. Meals also will be provided for those who normally dine in at the, at the Adult Activity Center, and they can uh, receive those simply by driving through the drive through at the Adult Activity Center after 11 o'clock, and they will be uh, provided to you there. The City of Andalusia will continue to update its website and social media pages with information about services from the city and in the community as it becomes available. Small businesses, we realize these are scary times for the owners of small businesses and for those who are furloughed or have shortened work hours. We want, to, we want you to know that we are closely monitoring the details in the aid packages that are being put together by both the federal and the state governments. Once we have the details of those, we will make sure that each of you have the resources you need to take care to, to take make access to those resources. We're putting together a focus group of local business owners to get input on the assistance you need. We will be working with the Chamber of Commerce to make human resources and other services available to you, and you can access those uh, federal aid programs. We also encourage our residents to shop locally, but we uh, we're also asking you to make an extra effort to support our small businesses during this time. We have already seen that the state health department closed the dining in and restaurants. Meanwhile, many of our restaurants have begun delivering or making curbside services or drive through so take, a, take advantage of that. Every time you purchase from a local retailer, you make a difference in our community. Kevin brought up a good point in our uh, uh, meeting that we had last Wednesday, this past Wednesday, and that was uh, buy some gift cards from local businesses. And uh, that way they get cash that they need now to keep their employees uh, on, on board and you can exercise that gift card down the road months from now. So go, go buy some gift cards at our local businesses. It'll help them, it'll help us. And finally, 
I'd like to remind all of our residents, as already been mentioned, be good neighbors. Uh, call and check on each other. Help each other out. We live in a great community, and uh, we all care about each other and love each other. And now is the time to really step up to the plate and demonstrate that. So we ask you to do that. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank our panel for being here today. Thank you for uh, having some vision to say we need to address our, our community. Uh, local folks like to hear from local faces. And so that's our attempt today. We're going to close in prayer, but let me make you aware of this if you're still tuned in with us, that uh, all of your frequently asked questions, those questions that come up often and over and over again will be uh, on uh, social media platforms at the uh, city of Andalusia, at the hospital, Facebook. Uh, if you're going to go on Facebook to get information, get it from a reliable source, which would be one of those uh, situations, not... Uh, from some place in California or Washington or New York, they have their own problems they're navigating. This is temporary. Uh, trouble uh, comes and trouble goes. So this is trouble. Troubles come, trouble will leave. And uh, some of us are experiencing different amounts of trouble, different levels of trouble. So be mindful of those in our community. Be mindful of those when you're out and about. If you never smile at people, this is a good time to start doing it. It's a good time to be friendly. It's a good time to be kind. And it is a great time to pray together. So we're going to pray here. We would invite you to join on the radio, on television, on Facebook Live and other platforms. Let's just uh, pause whatever you're doing all over this community, all over our county, just for a moment. And let's go to the Lord together. Father, I thank you for these men, uh, their families, and their commitment to this area, our home. Lord, we thank you for their commitment to you, and I pray, God, for every person on this panel, including myself and those watching on television at home, in their cars, in their businesses, that are looking for answers. Lord, I pray that as they look for answers, they will remember to look to you. Lord, I pray that you would let our minds be set on things above and not on things that are here. Help us to look further down the road. Help us to have courage in the midst of these challenging times. Help us to love well, to serve well. Lord, we ask that you would um, allow this virus to move in and out as quickly as possible. We pray that you would preserve life. We pray for those that say this is nothing, that, God, you would help them to see it is something. And Lord, I pray that they would not try to deny reality, but God, they would navigate reality. So help us to make decisions and not reactions. Help us to put our hope, our faith in you. Help us to take the proper steps, the proper precautions. God, would you use this season in lives all across our area, in homes all across our areas, that you might let mamas and daddies spend time with their kids. They might turn off the news for a few hours a day and spend time with each other. Help us to have a bigger perspective. We love you, and we thank you for always being close and near. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.